extending his hand and is saying this, I am inviting you into something where you've not been before. And I think this is maybe for his body worldwide, but I want to say that I really believe that we're on a good course right here. We're just seeking his face, saying yes, God. There's a yes and amen in our hearts. And I know he's going to bring us into some things with him. And uh, I, I believe this is part of it. I believe this is part of the raising of the dead. Pr praying for the dead to be raised. Praying for the sick to be well. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of not believing for it. Yeah. I'm tired of having this half-hearted Christianity that says, well, he can save to the uttermost, but he can't do these things because they're beyond logic. They're beyond... Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. That's too much. And Well, this church said, and this church said, and that denomination says, I, I want to get past that. I think we want to get past that. We want to follow on to pursue Christ. And he's walking outside of the denominations. He's saying, well, if you're going to set up camp there, you know, that's fine maybe for a season, but I'm moving on. And if you set up camp there, you're going to get lost, and you're not going to keep moving with me. So I just believe the Lord, he's, he keeps on going, and we've got to follow him wherever he's going. And he's taking this thing to the point where he is saying, I'm going to fashion in the earth my manifest sons. I'm going to bring forth a manifestation of my sons. My, my, uh, the sons who are the, um, what is it, the, Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren, right? So, Jesus was just a, I mean, he is Lord, but he is the, the type and the sign of what is to come. And, and it has, the Lord has manifested, and this isn't what I'm talking about tonight, I'm on a, on a little rabbit trail, but I, I believe that God wants us to hear it, that he is going to manifest in us the same way that Christ did, and even more. We'll do greater works than even these, right? Mm -hmm. And I think God's tired of, I don't know, I think he's tired of a church digressing from the word instead of coming up to the word. I think he's setting, he's saying, I want you to set a standard. And the standard being nothing less than the word. The word is it. If you're not living and measuring up and walking in, and this isn't becoming literal and and flesh, if it's not manifesting through you and in you and in your in the people, then something is wrong with our standard. We have digressed. We've gone backwards, and and it's made us a people of traditions of men that has really choked out the word of God. Amen. Um, and again, it's not to be better than anybody else. It's just to say, I ugh, I get this like sick feeling in my heart. Like, if I have to go to one more, don't you, don't hear, hear uh, don't hear me wrong in this. That I'm not trying to bash the, the body, but or the church. But I'm like, Lord, if I have to go to one more uh, church mm -hmm. service, and we praise you with our lips and. And I do it too, and I'm there too, and I'm praising this, and yet I'm not believing any of it. I'm not really apprehending any of this. Are we really apprehending all that for which Christ laid hold of us? Because that's what he's come for. He's come for us to come fully into him. And anything less um, is not the gospel. It's not the gospel. The gospel of the kingdom is the king's dominion in us fully. And so we're going to see, we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't be going and constantly being defeated by sin. We shouldn't. That, the scripture says, in, read 1 John, that's a good challenging book about sin and about the victory that we're called to have over it because of Jesus. This isn't at all what I was going to talk about. But let me just, I'll move on. What did you say? Keep going. Oh. <laughs> Man. Um. Yeah, I guess I got this, like, so uh, some of you guys know Rick Sturgeon. He comes here on occasions, and he does the Awakening Room in Clinton. He, he posted a quote today from Francis Frangipane. 
it's kind of Frank, Francis Frangipane's story about, you know, we would, he's like, I'd call, I'd call prayer meetings, and he'd be like, I'd get so frustrated that no one would come. Anybody else see this quote today? He said, I get so frustrated, these men, why aren't these men gathering and coming together and really rising up? And, and the Lord said, stop, the, the Lord told Francis French Payne to stop pointing the finger out there and be the man that he wanted all them to be. To be, to him to set the standard and to be that man. And I just feel like God is saying that about us. Stop looking at what everybody is not and start being what I've called you to be. Like, you set the standard. You Amen. set it for your own life. If, if you're troubled by the church, and, and this is good for me, if you're troubled by the hypocrisy in, in the church and that is also in you, then you set the standard. Then you break the mold out of that and you start living according to my word. And you come up higher. Break the mold of religion and stop living underneath the traditions of men and religiosity and systems of men. Amen? Amen. God's, the Lord is calling us out of it and it's going to trouble the religious pharisaical spirit. It's going to trouble it. There's pharisaical leaven in our own hearts and there is in the church. And if someone starts rising up and saying, I'm going to pursue Christ fully with all my heart, watch out. It's going to get intense. There's going to be a lot of... <sighs> but we can't be afraid of that and we can't be condemning the church and judging the church. We have to just say, I'm going to be who God's called me to be. And, and you, if you don't want to catch the fire and go with the Lord too, then I guess you're just going to wander. And obviously that, that's not the heart you have. Like. Lord, help you. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. That's, maybe i got to stick on for just a minute more, and then I'm going to go this. I, I feel like I feel like God is after reality in me and in us. And it's interesting. What I wanted to talk about tonight was the secret place. Um, and, uh, you know, I feel like most of us, we actually try to live. We don't, we don't maybe intentionally do it, but we're actually, if we get down to it, we do what we want to do, and we do what's, comfortable for us when we, we do what feels good to us, right? Generally, I mean, I'm not saying that that's our vision and that's where we want to end up, but I'm finding that out a lot about myself that the voice of the Lord contradicts a lot of what I feel like I should be doing. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I told Kelly today, I had to apologize for two things today because they were not like sinful things except the Lord had told me not to do them. Mm -hmm. And and I knew in the moment that it was the Lord, but then I, I justified it. I was like, well, that's not a sin. I don't have to do that. And then on the way over here, the Lord said, you need, you need to apologize to your wife because you were supposed to do something that I told you to do, but you didn't do it. Um, I, mean, I know I'm being vague. Uh, <laughs> it's not a, not a huge deal as far as the thing I'm talking about. It's just the, the fact that the Lord is like being real specific with me about little things. Little, I think, are insignificant things, and he's saying, no, this is actually very significant. Mm -hmm. And he started to show me that, how can you say that I'm really the Lord of your life if when I tell you to do something, you don't obey it? Yeah. Oh, that's a good point, Lord. <laughs> that's a good point. Good check in my heart. We've got we to gotta go with his voice. And Amen. Um, okay, so let's go to Matthew... Matthew, uh, go to Matthew 6. I'm not going to try to go to 930, but if I go to 930, are we good with that? Yeah. Okay, I'll try to be kind of quick. So 945. So that way I don't have to uh, keep promising 915 and it ends up 930. So I'll do that. All right. So... Chapter 6, be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, 
Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. It goes on to verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Verse 16, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who, who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Okay, um, so I just believe the point that God is, is wanting us to, to get a hold of is that He's a God that dwells in the unseen, the unseen places, and that He's called us to a life of, of secrecy, so to speak. Now, in other words, our main form of relationship with Him is in secret. So, when I'm, I'm saying our direct worship, our, where we really truly worship Him, our lives lived out before God is, is most, uh, most clearly um, manifested in the secret place. So, when we come into corporate gatherings, it's okay to come to corporate gatherings and you haven't prayed or, or been in the secret place with the Lord, but I feel like you're, you've done yourself a little bit of misser, uh, misservice and, and even the body. And I am guilty, uh, really guilty, of finding my spirituality in front of men in the past. And I would venture to say maybe a lot of us have had that, yeah. if we were honest. No one is agreeing with you. <laughs> um, maybe it is just me I'll, I'll take the blame I, I, it's interesting because um, because there is a sense of reward and significance you feel in front of men's eyes I was homecoming king and sweetheart king and prom something or other <laughs> court and um, I didn't ask for that, but, you know, for whatever reason, I, and here's what I feel like, and I, and I say this, I say this to say, I didn't actually like it. I didn't actually like being put in that position because I was kind of magnified. And I, for a moment I liked it because I'm like, the ladies, you know, they're like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's what I. Thank God it's high school. Andrew Will. <laughs> um, but I. Sorry. I have totally changed. All right? I'm different. And uh, but I, I felt like it was it was easy to live. No, how do I say it? It was hard to live. Um, kind of. You always, you always, you started to have this, I want to live before the eyes of men, kind of thing. And, and what I feel like the Lord was doing, and I didn't know it in this time, at that time, but what I felt like the Lord was doing is preparing me to be in a place where I would be in a place of leadership, or where men would look to me, and, and be able to steward it without doing it for, for men. Right, yeah. and I feel like God's had to pull junk out of me, and I feel like He's still doing it. He's still 
Like, I don't consciously say, well, I'm going to do this so that Luke Drone knows <laughs> that I can dunk on him in basketball. He does know that. <laughs> Sing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what I wanted to encourage us with is that God is, he is, man looks at the outward and God looks at the heart. And there is no reward other than the fact that you get, in a brief moment, the appreciation of men. That's your reward in full. When you live your spirituality before men's eyes. Now what we did tonight, corporate prayer, listen, that's very biblical. It's very biblical. But what the early church had when they came together in corporate prayer is they had the foundation that true communion takes place in secret. All all secret, all spirituality is born out of the secret place. Mm -hmm. All connection with the Lord is developed. Our, our walk in the Lord is developed in secret. Mm -hmm. Secret giving, secret fasting, secret praying, even secret ministry at times. Mm -hmm. um, listen, I know that there are things, what's the scripture say? Hey, <coughs> eventually what is in secret is going to be shouted from the rooftops. It's going to be brought into the light. And I think that that speaks of Part of what God does in the secret place is He starts developing in us a message and a trumpet. We become, whether we're speaking or not, we become, as we're walking before the Lord, when we get put in open places, we suddenly become a voice that shouts from the rooftops. We don't even, we not, may not be even verbally saying something. Is this making sense? I'm going to try to keep us going. So when you go pray, we should go into our closets and shut the door. And, and there we connect with the Lord. And it's interesting. I, w I would venture to say this. May you know what? I should just speak for myself. So I don't speak for you guys. But for me... Oh, okay. Uh, for me... The prayer closet is always the most ward over place in my own soul. It's like, ah, I dread it. I'm like, there's no light and action. And there's nothing. There's nothing to appease my flesh. Amen. Right. What is appeasing your flesh in a secret place? Nothing. You're you're just talking to a an invisible God, and you really have to believe. Hey, see you guys. Bless you. Amen. Ready for Valentine's Day tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Plans. <laughs> uh, I, so we got Valentine's plans tomorrow. So. Got any plans for you? I could very easily make plans for you. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. So. Uh, I feel like this needs to happen when we're on our watch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's, here's what I want to say. Here's what I, the point I want to make tonight is that, man, the secret place of prayer cannot be avoided. It cannot be neglected. It is the place where we are fully fashioned into Christ. It's where, and when I say the secret place, I'm not just talking about prayer, but that is foundational. When we start connecting and communing with the Lord in secret, he begins to reveal, I tell this in all truth, I have had more, more, how do you want to say it, um, incredible supernatural encounter in the secret place in my life than I ever had have any, anywhere else. And it's not about that, it's just that he, man, he is the exceeding great reward. When he comes, that's all that matters. When his presence shows up, that's yeah. all that matters. It changes everything. It's worth every bit of sitting there waiting, sitting there praying, sitting there. And, and when, when you start to come to Him in secret, it moves the heart of the Lord. He says, I see your faith. Faith moves the Lord. A apart from faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. Our faith, be because He is unseen, faith is what? Or the things that are eternal are unseen. And so faith grabs hold of what is unseen and it lays hold of it. It says, I know, God, you're there. Those that seek Him must believe that He is, 
and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. He is a rewarder. He's going to reward you. But I have found, and I wondered, Lord, why, why does... I have come to a lot of corporate prayer. Man, corporate prayer is so important, but out of order, it loses its glory. It loses its, its potency. It loses the authority and the power if it's out of order. And when it's out of order is when, when the body lacks closet prayer, closet time, secret prayer. Because we get no reward. Our reward is the fact that we're pretending to be spiritual in front of each other. Amen? That's the reality of it. If we aren't praying and burdened by Sam in our own secret place... Listen, I, I'm not saying that you can't come into a meeting and have and get suddenly burdened by the Lord and come into agreement. Amen. We should. But if we're going to stand up and start to act spiritual in the place of corporate prayer and we haven't had the same burden in the secret place, it's hypocrisy. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know what? I feel like the Lord's saying the anointing can't abide in that. The anointing isn't in that. That's why you feel like you're falling flat. That's why you feel like a flat line in your, in your soul and your spirit sometimes is because you're living before the eyes of men, not before the eyes of God. Yeah. When you, Scripture says those who seek God, their hearts will live. Yeah, yeah. When you really seek God, your heart will be alive. Yeah. Apart from seeking God, you're a flat line. And the, the anointing is like robbed from you. It, it's just dull. You are dull and there's no oil. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that from my own experience. I've had times of corporate prayer, and I have not been consistently at all. Sometimes I've, I've literally made my spiritual life. I'm totally confessing because I want to. I want to be real and say we can't. We can't have this. Don't model what I used to do in the past of saying, you know, it's okay to go a week without spending time with my Lord in secret, and then come into a corporate meeting and have have vigor and fire before men. Yeah. <laughs> it's and you know what. God still blessed people through it because He loves people and He has mercy on them. And He has mercy on the fact that we're coming in His name. But I tell you, it left me wanting. It left me saying, Lord, did, I don't know if I even connected with you, but I prayed a whole lot. I sure did shout a lot. I sure did come and contend for something. But that, see, corporate prayer is supposed to be a wonderful, beautiful, incredibly potent, powerful ministry of the body of Christ. When we come in agreement and gather together in agreement, I mean, the Bible's chock full of Scripture that talks about the power of agreement and the power of, you know, multiplication that comes as we gather. But we lack the effectiveness of prayer when our secret place is waning. And, and also, we lose our identity when we don't live in secret. I just want to declare that... The, the secret life is everything. Yeah. I feel like it is everything. When you live before the eyes of God, it is everything. When you constantly have in your heart that God is watching, I'm, doing, I'm living before God. I'm working as a worship unto God. I'm praying in secret, not for any man. Um, I'm coming before the Lord. And that, when you do that, it actually frees you up to pray in a corporate setting without any false humility. You can be incredibly bold, incredibly... You can shout and roar all you want, and you can be completely confident and at rest, knowing that, that you've already uh, spent time living before the Father's eyes. And you know that your heart is not to live... And He knows your heart is not to live before the eyes of men. Amen? I just think this is foundational. Matthew 6, 5, 6, 7... Um, but I, I, I really want to challenge us that even, here's the thought that I had is, God, I'm starting to think about giving in a whole new light. Lord, I heard a, I heard a guy tell the story. You guys remember Kirk Bennett? Mm -hmm. He told a story about, he said there was this guy that uh, he, he wanted to live before the eyes of the Lord. And so, and he wanted to give. Everything he did, he wanted to do it in secret. And he said, but God... One thing I, I don't ever want to do is let the offering tray pass and never give anything. Because I'm not always going to put something in there. I don't care. I'm going to do it. And he wasn't making that a law for anybody else. He just said, to, for me, Lord, I, I want this before you. And it's before your eyes alone. Multiply it. And 
One day he said the only thing he could come up with on his person was a pen. He said, well, Lord, multiply this or do something with it. And, you know, his giving is in secret. He didn't do it to say, oh, look how humble that guy is. He's even just given a pen. He, he was doing it, God, this is for you. And come, come to find out later on, Kirk Bennett said that this guy uh, had a, a crazy old prof, prophet type, kind of a, a grumbly old guy, just kind of walked to the door and, and handed him a box full of pens and said, the Lord told me to give this to you and left. No. <laughs> and, and then he said it, interesting, but it's never stopped. He said he's constantly getting pens and some people have given him like gold pens and silver pens. Oh, wow. He's just constantly getting pens. He's living before the eyes of the Lord. And the Lord's telling him something. Hey, you live in secret, I'll reward you openly. That's My, my reward will come to you openly. And I believe that God is saying, I want, I want you individually to go to a whole new level. And I want this body in this region to go to a whole new level. And it's never going to go to where I want it to go unless we grasp living before the, uh, the eyes of God alone. Until we start to say, my life is most lived out in secret. The most reward I'll ever get is knowing, Lord, that I am pleasing unto you. The, the greatest reward I'll ever receive is knowing that... No matter if anybody else knows, I'm doing this before you. And I don't even see you. But I trust. And I'm doing it in faith. You know what? I don't think Jesus said that to say it's bad to think of rewards. It's okay to have a reward mentality. God, reward me. Reward me. Because I'm still just living for you. I'm not living for anybody else. I don't want to spend these rewards on my own glory. Or I'll go right back into living for the eyes of men again. Um, it's, so I... I think God's wanting to shout to us, it's time to go really invest our lives in secret. That does not mean we don't gather. All the more we should be gathering. All the more. But all the more we should have an incredible foundation of, I'm living in secret before you, God. I'm going to give in secret. Here's a thought I had was, let's give. Let's be the most incredibly giving people ever. And no one knows who's ever giving anything. It's okay if somebody finds out, but man, I found out one time, and I won't put him on the spot because I'll let him live before the eyes of the Lord. I won't steal his reward, but I had a guy give me, and it was a desperate time, and I heard, I was downstairs, and I heard somebody walk in, I was like, it was boom, 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 boom. I was like, who's there? And I walk upstairs, nobody there, an angel. And I didn't know what was going on. Demon or angel, one of the two. <laughs> Sometimes it's still up for No. Um, so, uh, so I heard it again. And this next time I come up, and there's an envelope with uh, $400 in it. Um, sorry if I got that amount wrong. Too. Uh, I think it was $400. All I know is that came at, a, at an exact time that Kelly and I really needed that. And, um, and it was actually like something that we were like, Lord, you're faithful. That boosted our faith to say, God, Amen. you provide. Like, I don't have to be so concerned like, and so freaked out about this. You really do provide. You are a good and faithful God. <laughs> um, so I believe that the reason that we haven't seen the dead raised and we haven't seen the type of healings that, that the early church saw and that numbers of other people in the nations of the earth are seeing and the breakthrough that we that is coming but we haven't fully entered into yet i believe the reason we haven't fully entered into it yet is because we lack secret place prayer we lack um the the uh the closet the time with the lord living before his eyes alone anybody else agree on that one mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. um i mean scripture is replete with jesus getting away in secret and going to be alone with the Father. And I'm thinking, Lord, wouldn't you want, like, wouldn't it be better to bring all the guys with you so there can be some agreement? And I feel like, as you know, because the tendency for, for him would still, I'm not saying that Jesus would have sinned, but he could have been tempted to live before their eyes. I don't know. I just think he had to get away. He had to get away. Amen? Because he's been tempted at all points as us, yet without sin. Um, there's something about the inner man 
This is what we don't understand, is that the inner man, the inner life, is everything. Jesus talked about <coughs> strengthening, or the, the scripture talks about Romans, or no, Ephesians, is it 3.16? About being strengthened in your inner man, um, with might by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the inner man, we don't see with our eyes, but it's, it's there, it's secret, it's hidden. Our, our inner man, our, the secret place, man, that is what's got to be developed in our lives. We've got to have a heart that's living before the Lord constantly. Um, I just want to share a quick story. When I was... So sin, so sin will harden your heart. And it will cause you to keep away from going to the Lord in shame. It can't separate you because the blood of Jesus speaks, right? You can be washed by the blood, but... In your own conscience, you get this wall, and you get this shame, and you get this guilt, and it, and your and what starts forming over your heart is this hardness, and then like, then you fear going before the Lord, and you are just like, it, you get sucked dry of any desire for it. So that's the danger of sin. Amen. It's death. It's death working in us. We cannot allow it to remain in us. It wants to rob us of this fruitful inner life, this secret life. God will reward openly the hidden life lived before Him. I remember when I was starting to seek the Lord a lot um, in college. Um, I still, Kelly's, there's one thing I never told anybody else, but I told Kelly. It was when I was in, in the place meeting with the Lord, uh, just nobody else, nobody knew I was there, I just was praying by myself. And, and, to this day, I revert back to the thing, some things that God told me, about three or four things that God told me. I asked him very specific questions, and he answered very specifically. All I can tell you is that it was clear words in my heart um, confirmed with the overwhelming sense of God's presence. And still to this day, I look back to that season of life,